It's a beautiful day for a repot. I can tell you, I've got no wind. What a rarity it's been <laughs> to have a day like this. And it's also a great day for a Care Collab. So 11 channels participating, including myself today, on the general care of Zygopetalums. Now I grow in Lekka and self-watering, and this is not a common way of growing or cultivating Zygopetalums. That's why I'm gonna do a repot here with the Care Collab, kill two birds with one stone, and hopefully not kill my Zygopetalum. That's been doing really well in the setup for so long, even rescued. I almost lost it, but it bounced back and it did bloom this year. And you can see that, yeah, the roots are coming out. They're new. This is my backup. If I make any mistakes and the orchid decides to dump the roots, if I'm too radical with it, then I have this as backup and they're a little bit crowded in there. I want to make sure that they don't get squashed out and have plenty of room to go into the pot for the next couple of years. So what I'm going to do is put you on the tripod, but in that direction so that I've got my hands free and don't make too much of a mess here in front of the camera. But I'll talk to you throughout the report regarding my care and anything else funky that I may find. And this happens to be Zygopetalum trozy blue, which was identified for me finally after it did bloom for me earlier this year. All the videos of the other Care Collab channels will be in the description below. Please, if you're not comfortable with Lekka and self-watering as a setup for your Zygopetalums and you're not entirely sure if this is the way you want to go, then all the videos linked below have different setups and different climates and different grow methods, which may be more conducive to what you want to do with your Zygopetalum, should there be any uncertainty regarding the culture of these beautiful orchids. Jibber jabber. Goodbye, let's get some work done Woo! before the wind picks up again. Prior to this repot, I have soaked my zygo here in some calcium, magnesium and seaweed just to make sure that I can do the least amount of damage to the roots. Notorious, notorious delicate roots. Even just squeezing the pot with the leka could be you know, bruising the roots, which could cause dumping of the roots. And then you start again. Growing an orchid in a pot has always got that risk with it that, you know, it has to come out at some point. Growing any orchid in self-watering leka, it isn't a one-stop shop. There's still maintenance that needs to be done to ensure the aeration is guaranteed in the pot, no matter how large the root system grows, the health and the climate of the pot is fundamental to keep it successfully growing and not dying off. But yes, the squeezing here is making me a little bit queasy because these roots are delicate and everything should be done within measure. I mean, again, repots are necessary. Let's see how careful we can be. Not only because the orchid is already up against the edge of the pot, but I do need to repot this one because in my setup, I try to go into the pot every two, maximum three years to clean out the root ball, to check for dead roots, re-establish aeration and oxygen around the root ball. So that's what the plan is here today. The pot is rock hard. I don't want to bash it with my hammer. I would like to keep this pot and use it again for another orchid. So I'm not going in at all with anything radical, just trying to be as gentle as possible. And I can see that I had Ceramus in here three years ago. Water retentive, loving orchid, another part of the care. I never let this orchid dry out, no matter the time of year. In the winter, there may not be as much water in the reservoir, but I do maintain my microfiber as humid as possible so that I never lose the wicking property of my leka. So I'm going to try and tip the orchid out if possible <laughs> against the root tips so that the leka doesn't fall on the root tips. And this is much easier than I thought it would be. 
I was a bit nervous about doing this repot on film because she has been in here for such a long time. Also because I don't want to mislead anybody. If you see anything radical happening with the roots and how I go about it, you know, fundamental cause of care or deterioration of a zygo is damaging the roots. And I just saw that we have a little bit of an issue. <laughs> it's a great issue to have, but not when you're repotting and you're trying to be careful with the roots. Look at that. The roots have already come down through the bottom. I'm going to bring you in and let's see if we can tweak away that microfiber and save those roots. Push comes to shove, I will chop the roots, but I do want to give it a go. And I want to see if I can forfeit the microfiber because I have plenty of that and roots are more important. Just make sure she doesn't roll away from me. And I'm sorry now if the breeze is affecting the mic. I'm glad I have a bit of a breeze. We have finally got ourselves some proper Spanish temperatures. It's taken a while. It's been a weird spring. But let's get this root released. Stop her from rolling above there. Did it go through the other end? No. First things first. It did not go through the other end. If it had gone through the other end, I'd be chopping around the microfiber and leaving that little piece of microfiber attached. There we go. Now let's see if she'll come out without breaking that, seeing as we've done that very carefully. Let's have a look-see. Whatever resistance I have now is not the roots, it's the microfiber. There we go. Whew. We got that one out of the way. There is a little bit of decline, but not much. Three years in here, I'm okay with that. What I can shake out, I will and replace, but I'm not going to be chopping at these roots in any way, shape or form. Isn't that gorgeous? I'm going to leave the microfiber in here as well. I know this sounds weird, but it's more important that the orchid roots stay healthy as opposed to me wanting to get rid of that microfiber where it's cracked right here it looks to me like there is a break i'm going to cut that piece of microfiber off but everything else is going to stay intact this is not a radical root cleanup being a semi-terrestrial orchid a zygopetalum does not need to have so much done to it an up pot is much more advantageous than getting a root ball clean and also being in inorganic media my media is not going to go stale, and if there aren't that many dead roots in here, then it won't affect the climate or the health of the pot. So I've got my next size up pot ready, and to make sure that my roots do not dry out in the breeze now, I'm going to wet them down with a sprayer. These have been used to super, super wet, and that's how they're going to stay even as I prepare the media. And when I say prepare the media, I did not bring out my LECA because I wanted to see what was going on in this pot before making the decision regarding which LECA I'm going to use. And right now I'm gonna get small LECA and my other size up pot. And then we're just gonna pot her up and we'll talk about how I care for my zygopetalum throughout the years. So what I've done here is I've gone from a 15 centimeter pot to an 18 centimeter pot, one size up. And because the root ball has so much microfiber already in it, despite the fact that I'm going up a pot size, I'm only putting in one loop into the base with the microfiber here. Doesn't need much more because this time, instead of using a mixed LECA size, I'm going with small LECA only. Big pot, one microfiber, two microfiber strands still stuck in the root ball, small lecker. That'll be just perfect to maintain the same kind of water retention around the root ball that it is accustomed to. Another thing I'm going to do is make the microfiber float. 
so that everything falls in very, very gently around the root ball and there isn't any risk of bruising. If the squeezing of the pot already did some bruising damage, the falling of lecker into and around the root ball doesn't have to perpetuate the problem. This is a little bit gentler than anything else of just throwing media into the pot. On second thoughts, I'm going to cut the length of this microfiber. There's no need for it to be that long. It is there and it is entwined in the older part of the root ball. And then all I'm going to do is set the orchid back in. Now, let's have a look, see. Clearly she's only got one direction of growth. That works perfect for me. But what I'm going to do is put the tag in in the back so I'm not stabbing around on any live roots, just to make sure that I have that in place. And I'm just gonna fill around the front part with Lekka and that will serve as my third hand. Stabilizing the orchid into position. See how easy that lecker just pours around the roots, just gently falls into place. I can still maneuver it with my hands and I'm not messing about damaging, bruising, or any kind of other root abrasion that could be a detriment to the roots that we have left in the pot. Give it a little bit of a shake. So filling up in and around the pot, I just completed that step off camera so as not to make this video too long, but I hope that that was pretty obvious. The biggest message out of this care collab, in my opinion, is the most important commodity of a zygopetalum is the root ball. That is a treasure and you want to maintain that and not risk it by being too drastic about it. But what I've done is put her in a pot one size up as mentioned, and this will probably only last me one year, which is fine. At this point in time, because she was a rescue and only rebloomed for me first time this year, I'm just giving her another year before I then become a little bit more radical. This way she gets more storage organs and can then probably tolerate a little bit more of a radical cleanup the next year. I could have gone two pot sizes up. I chose not to specifically for that point that I don't want to be too complacent with this zygopetalum and I want to make sure that I have a healthy one as opposed to another struggling one because I would like to have a bloom cycle again. The beauty of zygopetalums is that if they're going to bloom for you, you will know pretty quickly because a new growth will develop a spike. I am in southern Spain, so I am very doubtful that I will get a spike out of this new growth simply because my temperatures are now rising. I have my zygopetalum outside for most part of the year as she can tolerate quite low temperatures, which is favorable for me during the months of January throughout June. Normally, my temperatures rise a little bit faster also in May. This year, I've had a very mild spring, so she's been able to stay out until the end of June, which is not something I normally would do. She likes a lot more light than you would think. So my leaves are a little bit on the lighter side, that's her light influx. And she has been living on the top shelf of my blooming alley, which is south facing, but in shade. And there's always a cooler breeze going through there. My temperatures now are up to 30 degrees Celsius during the day. They will drop to about 20, 21 at night, but that's not gonna stay. And I am not comfortable with her being in that warm environment for an extended period of time. So now she switches back into my dining area where I have my winter set up for the rest of the orchids that are now outside. And she will have continued bright shade, same as if she were in my blooming alley. There's plenty of airflow because I leave that terrace door open as well constantly, except at night. But she will be more protected from the heat. Despite being up against the glass, there won't be the hot winds that I am expecting now throughout July and August. My previous 10 days have been a very dry wind, but it wasn't hot, so she could tolerate all of that. But now we're coming into the dangerous temperature range that I consider dangerous for her because I don't have any humidity in my environment at all. If I had a little bit of humidity, I could play with that, but the heat 
and no humidity, that's not a good thing for this orchid. And that is why she is also in self-watering and LECA because of the fact that she is a drinker and I can't keep up and I don't want those roots to ever go dry. Being a cooler grower, of course, then I bring her out when the other ones all go back in and she's back on my south facing blooming alley. And then in the winter, she gets direct sun filtering through the terrace because of the angle of the sun. So there's a lot of light that this orchid has. I have not seen any leaf burn. The spotting on the leaves is something that comes with aging. There's also something to be said about too much fertilizer and then there's leaf tip dieback. These are the growths from the past years. When I got her right here, my rescue attempt bulb is right here, this itty bitty tiny one. And then she started to do the wonky growth thing and I let her. I do light training with my orchids so that the growth come upright and go straight and nicely into the pot and don't become unruly. With this one, she was in such bad shape. I just thought, you're giving me a growth, go where you want to. I am not going to interfere because light training on an orchid that is also a little bit on the stress side or the rehab side is a stress factor. You want the orchid just to recover. So I let her do what she wanted. And that's why this growth just went wonky. It was important that I get this growth as opposed to doing what I wanted her to do. And this is why now you can see there was a little bit of fertilizer burn. If the roots are non-existent, I was putting in calcium magnesium. I was trying to pump her up with fertilizer to give her some strength and that didn't work out very well. But once she got the roots established for this growth, the next growth came and I started light training and then you can see how it's curved. And that is because of where she was sat and she had space. The next growth beyond that, much better, much nicer looking. This was the one that bloomed for me earlier in the season, straight up. And now we've got the orchid situated in such a way in a pot that her next growth will also be straight up in line with the other one because my light source is coming from this side so that the growth moves up. And that is when I talk about the speckles here now, that is aging. Considering that I don't have much humidity, but doing it with self-watering and LECA, and you saw a bit of ceramic there, I am glad that I don't have that many spots. Airflow is important. If the humidity is way too high, then these spots are also much more predominant and they will come and there's nothing really wrong with it. It just doesn't look nice. But with a lot of airflow and a little bit high humidity, that spotting wouldn't occur. With my really hot temperatures, that for seven, eight months of the year, she has acclimated to my conditions in such a way that the self-watering helps with a microclimate around the pot and taking up the humidity from the clay pebbles through the leaves day and night. She has no issues with the heat. Her preferred temperatures would be anything from 25 degrees Celsius all the way down to 13, 12. Not a problem at all, even down to 10. I don't give her that low temperatures because again of my setup, there is an evaporative cooling effect with the LECA. And for that reason, if it gets below 10 degrees Celsius, I bring my orchid indoors and then she spends the night inside in my dining room area. Then the next day I take her out again and put her on the top shelf of my blooming alley. If the temperature at night during winter in my climate is about 13, 12 degrees, I don't care. She can take it because I'm sort of calculating a three degree differential between what is the ambient air as opposed to what's happening in the pot. So if I have 13 degrees ambient air at night where I leave her outside, because I'm assuming I only have 10 degrees Celsius in the pot and that is okay. But basically she is my outdoor resident for most of the winter. And if it gets a little bit too cold, I bring her in. But now when the other ones are enjoying the heat, it's getting too much for her, so we do a switcheroo. Now she goes inside. Always has access to a lot of light. I always fertilize her when she is in active growth, which is like right now, she's getting 300 parts per million of MSU fertilizer at 6.3 pH, one refill of the reservoir and 5.8 pH, the next filling of the reservoir. And I flush a lot. 
even if I don't have to fill up the reservoir, especially this time of year when it's getting hot and dry, I flush a lot because this little microclimate of exuding humidity through the pebbles is perfect for this orchid. I hope that this was helpful if you are considering growing a zygopetalum in inorganic media. I would steer away from things like lava rock because lava rock is super unforgiving with regards to any repot. And once again, the biggest thing that I want to bring forward is the sensitivity of the roots. The roots are its most precious commodity. Keep the roots from breaking, keep the roots hydrated, and a zygopetalum is, in my books, not a problem. What I did wrong when I first got her, I cleaned her up so radically, she was so squeaky when I touched the leaves. That is not the way to go. I mean, she was even drying out on my laundry stand. That's how much I cleaned her up from that peat stuff. That was a mistake. It didn't kill her, but it set her back a lot. But here we are three years later and we had our blooms and that is why also I want to maintain her current growth momentum and I'm not going up a pot size just to save myself the hassle of having to do this again next year. I want to make sure that she is going to do well. These roots are now going to find their way into the pot, the ones that are coming out underneath the growth. I've mounted up the leka a little bit higher just around the base of the growth here. I can do that because I have a dry top layer and the roots won't have to be guessing where they're supposed to go. Being a semi-terrestrial, semi-hydro, inorganic media, all that is very, very conducive to growing this orchid. I like to say often, semi-hydroponics and LECA was actually introduced and invented for the purposes of growing normal houseplants, making the houseplant culture indoors a cleaner environment. So if I hear terrestrial, semi-terrestrial combined with an orchid, I never have a problem. I never have any doubts with regards to putting it into a setup like this. It is not everybody's cup of tea. I get it. Everybody's environments are different. But if you're interested to know more and I haven't circled back on a thought with regards to why this is working so well for a zygopetalum in hot Spain, I'll be more than happy to elaborate in the comments below. I know that they have a reputation but as you can see, this one is doing well now after I messed it up when it arrived into my collection. So any questions, please ask away in the comments. I'll be happy to elaborate. Meanwhile, also to all the other collaborating channels today, thank you so very, very much for being so quick to respond with regards to your participation. And thank you for doing your videos. I am very, very interested to see how everybody else grows their zygopetalum even though it is not my preferred growing method, I love seeing the different ways one can grow an orchid and do it so successfully. May I just add one little thing, if you're still here, Michael McCarthy, thank you very much for all your insights, your information, your knowledge, everything that you know about zygopetalums, I think has been a game changer for everybody that wants to grow these beautiful, fragrant orchids successfully. And that's why I just wanted to bring that up because I am sure that many people that are collaborating here today are successful because of Michael McCarthy. So thank you so much, Michael, for your generous sharing of your knowledge with everyone. Thank you everybody for watching my video. If you're here the first time, welcome. If you're here again, welcome. <laughs> I really appreciate it. I appreciate your time. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Please go and check out the links below and stay safe. I hope to see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.